And once we go, I'm going to start the video first. Boom. Boom. So now, go ahead and get this thing going. Her ears might be updating too. All right, for everybody that is tuning in live at home, we happy to see y'all this morning. Uh, for people that were waiting to get on here, Zoom is doing some type of update. So I understand if y'all not on right on time, but other than that, we're good to go. We're happy to see you. Happy to be here this Mother's Day. Hopefully, all of you guys are having a great Mother's Day. Oh, there she is. Oh, we're having a great Mother's Day uh, so far, even though you might just be waking up. Hopefully, your kids may have drawn you something. Somebody let you know that it's a happy Mother's Day. If not, we're going to let you know here at TB. Happy Mother's Day. Um, and with that being said, uh, Mrs. Mitchell, you were going to open us up in prayer. Correct. And yes. I think you had a song for us. That's right. Yes. All right. Let's go on with it. Let's go ahead with it. Amen. Uh, God, we thank you this morning for this lovely day of honor, God. We thank you for just allowing us to show love to you first off as our father. We thank you for just allowing your spirit to dwell within us. God, we thank you for your love being shown to us. We thank you for your peace being given to us, God. We thank you for your son dying and rising for us. God, we thank you for just our mothers. We thank you for our grandmothers. We thank you for our great aunts. God, we thank you for our our stepmothers, God, we thank you for all those mothers or motherly figures that have come into our lives, God, to show us your way, to show us how to live godly, to show us the, the, the institutes of, of marriage, to show us how to take care of ourselves, to show us how beautiful we are, how important we are to you and to the world. God, we thank you for all those things, oh God. But first, we ask you that you forgive us of our sins, that you wash us and cleanse us of any impurities, anything that does not look like you or your spirit or your character, God. Continue to mold us, refine us, purify us consecrate us, whatever you have to do to keep us in right standing with you, to keep us in holiness, to keep us sanctified, oh God. Do what you must in our lives, oh God. And God, we ask that those that are hearing, oh God, that those that will be on this Zoom call receive what they need for their individual lives, for their personal lives, so that they may grow spiritually, that their ears are open to your instructions, that their eyes are keen to those things in the spirit, and that their tongue confess those things that you confess, oh God, and that you say, oh God. And we thank you, oh God, for the man of God that's bringing the word, God, that you be his tongue, oh God, that you be the words coming out of his mouth that your spirit engulfs him as he speaks to millions of people and as he speaks to his body of TV fam, God, continue to equip him, continue to undergird him in your word and in your spirit, straighten up his back, uh, uh, keep his footing, oh God, so that he won't fall to the left or to the right, oh God. We thank you 
in all things, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So, with that opening prayer, it was very lovely. Giving thanks to the mothers and the grandmothers and all of that. We're going to go ahead and get into our offering proclamation, our sowing proclamation, what we always do here. First, before we do the word, because like it said, a prophetess had told us, it says in the Old Testament, the people had to come and leave their offering outside before they can come into the inner courts. We believe in following that because that's how it was established. So first, we do our offering and our tithing, and then we come into the inner court to get the word. So with that being said, what we're going to do is go right into our sewing proclamation that I will put up. Let me get that ready for you right there. And if you would, repeat it after me. Being obedient to God's will. Being obedient to God's will. I sow into my future. I sow into my future. A future of peace. A future of peace. A future of love. A future of love. And a future of prosperity. And a future of prosperity. I gladly give back to God. I gladly, I gladly give back to God, back to God. Wow. so that he so that, so that he can gladly give me can gladly, gladly give me my rightful inheritance my, my rightful, my rightful my inheritance. inheritance all right amen. and if you believe that amen Hallelujah. here is how you can donate here is Hallelujah. how you can give yeah. give God some type of praise hand clap Verbal praise, however you do it, because he's giving you an opportunity to give back to him. That way you keep favor in his kingdom. Amen. He says he will eat up the canker worm for you once you do these type of things. Give back to him that he can gladly give back to you. Amen. 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 All right. Lead it up for a little bit longer than we... All right, all right. There we go. There we go. We're going to take it on off and jump off into this thing. So, I say, hopefully, you guys are having a good morning. This is actually my first Mother's Day message. So, we're all in this thing together when we're on this ride. Just know that. Just know that. So, with that being said, I'm going to jump off into it, and it may not be a traditional Mother's Day message, but this is what the Lord gave me to give, and I tried to come up with one message, and then it went back to this, and then it went to, okay, let me try this again, and it still went back to this. So obviously, the Lord has something to say to someone, and hopefully you all get it. Matter of fact... My wife has a song for you guys this morning. Go ahead and sing. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. 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 
it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah, oh God. My hallelujah belongs to you. If you could sing that where you are right now. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh God. My hallelujah belongs to you. If we could all just say it together. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Yes, oh God, we give you all of the glory. All of the glory belongs to you. We give you praise every day, oh God. All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, oh God. All of the glory belongs to you. If we can lift our voice and just, and just say, you deserve it. 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 Hallelujah, God. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of the glory belongs to you. Hallelujah, God. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. Oh God, all of the glory belongs to you. <laughs> Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Say all the glory. All the honor, all the praise. Hmm. We say it again. Say hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. All the glory, all the honor, Lord, all the praise. Hallelujah, oh God. One more time. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Say all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. My 
My hallelujah belongs to you. Hallelujah, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. Our hallelujah belongs to you. Mm. Our hallelujah. Our hallelujah belongs to you. You are the only one that gives the high praise, oh God. Our hallelujah belongs to you. And the only reason why is because you deserve it. 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 Thank you, oh God. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. Hallelujah, oh God. We give you honor this day, oh God. We give you praise because you deserve it. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes, God. You do deserve all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We give it to you this morning. And as we go into this word, let it touch who it needs to touch. Let it reach who it needs to reach. Let it change who it needs to change. Let it open eyes that need to be open, Father. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Yeshua the Christ, holy name. Amen, amen. Well, this morning is Mother's Day morning. Today is Mother's Day, a day that Americans have chosen to honor mothers, a day that has its place and should be honored because mothers mean so much to us as a people. For some reason, many mothers get overlooked and they're underappreciated. So this day and our culture is much needed. So mothers, wherever you are today, today is about you. Many times on Mother's Day in church, we honor all the women that attend. Some ministries buy flowers and candy for all the women. Some go out and buy, you know, Mother's Day cards and give small gifts or gift cards to, you know, the women in the ministry. And that takes a whole lot of money to do. We applaud the effort. And hopefully that doesn't get overlooked. But in saying this, I do dare to say this. when we honor all the women in the church on Mother's Day and we honor everybody, we kind of diminish what the day is actually for and who it is to honor. And that is the mothers. By honoring all the women or just randomly grouping them all in together, we're actually doing the mothers a disservice. And we do the same thing when we go around just wishing random women a happy Mother's Day. <laughs> what do you get that? I'm going to get there and I'm going to try to help us understand how important this is. It's like 
we group everybody in, but there has to be something that differentiates the two. And when I say the two, that means women and mothers. They are not the same. Make no mistake. Every person born with two X chromosomes can grow to be a woman. But not all women can become mothers. They're two different things. And let me pause that real quick. Mrs. Mitchell, seems like your kids are trying to jump me in here. Anyway, back to the word. Women, little girls can grow to be women. Ladies can grow to be women. But not all women are mothers. It's two totally different things. Not all women can be mothers. Not all women are called to be mothers. That is a very important distinction. So we should not group them all together. And just because they're women, happy Mother's Day. Or say happy Mother's Day to some. It's not the same thing. To be a mother is to be something truly special. We are made of this earth, as it says in Genesis. But the earth is also another mother that gets overlooked, atrociously overlooked. We don't even think about that. Mother Earth. We were made from the dirt of this earth. We live on the dirt of this earth. And when you have a woman that becomes a mother, she, in essence, becomes just like Mother Earth. What are you talking about? What do you mean? She becomes a giver and a sustainer of life. Think about that. We were born from the dirt of this earth. We live on it. The earth provides us what we need to live and what's needed to sustain us. Water, food, shelter, air to breathe. When a woman becomes a mother, she provides those things for her children. Food shelter, sustenance, care, nurturing, the same thing. So in essence, she becomes like the earth for her children. Not all women have that. Not all women can get that. Not all women are that. You see, we already have a main distinction between the two. But just by birthing something from your womb, you have a gift that all women do not have. Mothers are called to endure things that others can't. Look at childbirth, for instance. They were saying that God placed a curse on women. You are going to have painful childbirth. Knowing that, many of us would not have children. If it was up to men, it wouldn't be that many people here at all. I'm not going to go through that. You have certain women. I'm not going to go through that. Some women aren't going to go through their bodies changing, their emotions getting all out of whack, their body getting all out of whack, not being like it used to. In order to have a child, in order to birth something, in order to give life, some people aren't willing to give up what they already have. A mother sees the bigger picture and is willing to sacrifice to bring new life into this world. Mothers have many trials and tribulations that children bring to mothers. When they're young, they do a lot of things that that despite all your best efforts, hurt you. 
things that make you wish, oh, I wish I could take back that night that I was with their father. Sometimes that happens. Some things that make you wish that you never had children in the first place. It's a lot of heartbreak that comes with children. It's a lot of heartbreak that comes with watching them grow older and leave home. Are you putting all your efforts into them and they still don't understand and take you for granted? It's a lot of things that you have to deal with just with the children as a mother. Mothers will go through life and endure pain, shame, ridicule, scrutiny, dehumanization, being belittled, physical and mental stress, and heartbreak, all to provide for their children. Think about that. Who is willing to endure all of that for your child? You have many people, I'd rather not have kids if that's what it's going to take. But being a mother is a calling. It's not just something that we do. It's an actual calling to be a mother. And women that are actually answering this call to be a mother begin to understand that these things come with what being a mother is. And I can either run from it I can run to it and endure through it. Mothers are to be commended with the amount of things they have to put up with. And this is just with being a mother. This isn't wives day. This isn't girlfriends day. This is mother's day. So just think about a girlfriend or a wife. They have other things on top of being a mother they have to go through. But this is just for the mothers today. Hmm. They go through all of this to provide and protect their children. I'll let somebody lie on me to make sure my child is all right. I'll let this person talk to me crazy because if I don't, I might lose my way to provide for my children. I watch all type of things that go on. that shouldn't even happen. Go through things I should never have to go through in order to care for my children. Those are things that mothers do. This is a kind of love that only mothers and the Godhead know. Fathers have a different type of love, but we're not talking about fathers today. We're talking about mothers. Just because you're a woman don't mean you have this type of love. Most women won't know this type of love until they have children. Then their eyes would be open to a different type of love. Some women could talk about it, but until you experience it, you don't know. I've learned a lot these past few weeks. I'm not going to go into why. But the people on this call, I'm not going to go into why, but I've learned a lot and some things I knew, but now it's going into a different dimension. It makes me think about things totally different, look into things further than what I can see as a man. So as a man telling you mothers this, I commend you. Because once I think about what us men just put you through, it's a lot you have to deal with. It's a lot on you mother's plates. Hmm. My goodness. But like I was saying, with that type of love for their children and what they're willing to sacrifice for their children, only the Godhead knows that type of love. This brings me to my first scripture that illustrates the love that women have for their children. And it shows that it's the same type of godly love that he has for us. Let's turn to Isaiah 66. We're going to read chapter 13. Let me know when you're there. Thank you. 
there. All right, all right. And it says, as one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. He's telling the people once you get back to Jerusalem, just like a mother comforted their children, the same way a mother cares for their children, nurtures them, loves them, gives them things, helps them with this, the same way that mothers do that. God is saying, I'm going to love y'all the same way. That's what I'm going to be doing with y'all. This scripture illustrates that a mother has the love of God for her children. Think about how deep that is. Why else would they endure what they endure? The same type of godly love that he has for us. Why does God endure what he does with us? That's a feeling that only he and mothers will have. Men don't even get that experience. Mothers, you guys are truly something special. When you have the love of God that we don't even feel, we can only imagine you actually carry life, created it in a womb. God gave you that ability. And through the pain and suffering, you gain godly love. Look at that. Through the pain, you gained a love that only God has. That's a love that we won't be able to experience, that section of love. Hmm. That's something that all women don't have. And it's made more evident in society that we live in. Some women now have begun to look at children as a burden or some type of punishment. Those type of women don't have that godly love. They don't have that. Hmm. Matter of fact, for you to be a mother, like you could have kids, but for you to be a mother, that type of godly love is required. That's like by God, that's required. He has that. If he didn't have that type of love with us, he would have killed us all a long time ago. When you think about mothers, the stuff that their children put them through sometime, they would have killed those kids a long time ago if they didn't have that type of love. Like God has for us once we're just thinking about it. But some of these women don't have that type of godly love that is required. And they walk away from motherhood. I might get backlash for some of the stuff that's coming, but oh, well. Some women even choose to kill their child to avoid motherhood not knowing that they are killing their inheritance from God and his reward for them. Think about that. Some women have babies and choose just to give them up. I don't want to be a mother. Walk away. Just do whatever. I don't have that type of love that God has for me, for my children. You have some that I don't even want to test that bucket. I'd rather kill the child now so I don't even have to deal with any of that. It's a difference between mothers and women. But what I mean by they're killing off their inheritance and their reward, let's turn to Psalms 127, and we're going to read verse 3. I'm not going to be before you guys long. I know a lot of y'all want to take your mamas out to eat, want to draw pictures for them. Your kids done drew your pictures. They want to sing you Happy Mother's Day. Some of y'all going to the movies. All types of things are going on. So I'm not going to hold you that long. But if you could, let's turn to Psalms 127 and 3. Let me know you there. There. All right. It says, Lo. 
children are an heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Think about that. An heritage, that means it's an inheritance. So when you have children, God is giving you some of your inheritance here on earth. And it says for you to even be able to have a child, that the fruit of the womb is a reward. God is actually rewarding you for something. But the way the world has spun it and the way the world has made women feel about themselves and from influence of the enemy, all other types of things that may have happened, we have women look at this as a burden or punishment or now I don't even want the child. I'll kill the child now. So just think what this scripture is saying. This is your inheritance and it's a reward for you. But you kill off your inheritance from God and kill off your reward. That's like rejecting God. Think about it. God is saying here, I'm giving you a part of your inheritance on earth. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven for this part. I'm going to give it to you now. And this child, this beautiful child will be a reward for you. And you have some women that I don't want that inheritance. I don't want that reward. It's kind of like you're spitting back in the face of the Lord. You have some women walk away from it. I'll get the children to somebody else. I don't want that. You see, not everybody is called to be a mother. Not everybody can be a mother. Hopefully, we are starting to see the difference between women and mothers. Now, you see why I say once we just honor everybody at the church, we just flowers for all the women, cars for all the women, all that. It's cool. The gesture is great. I understand it. But what we're doing is throwing some people that have the gift of motherhood, that have this calling, throwing them in with women that don't have that gift, don't have that calling, don't want it, and can't fulfill it. We're throwing them all in together. It's time to separate the mothers from the women or the women from the mothers. Like they said with some of the men, it's time to separate the boys from the men. It's time to separate the mothers from the women. We should have that. Some mothers get this reward. They like their reward. They like their inheritance. I done kind of got off where I was, but let me, let me get back to it real fast. By you being able to have children, God is blessing and rewarding a mother. Women that answer the call to be a mother begin to see the blessings that come with children and are rewarded for their achievements. Children can be lots of things for and to the mother. Sometimes they're a friend. What has loneliness and abandonment? Sometimes they're emotionally there for you when no one else seems to care. They share many of, hmm, many of your triumphs. When you, hi, I got that new job. We're actually doing this here. Things are going good for me. Usually you come home and your children feel that same energy. You confide some things in them like a little child mind can understand. And then in turn, they confide things in you. When you're happy, usually your children are happy. They share all of your achievements and your triumphs. But at the same time, they're there for you when you're low. When you're not flying so high and you're in a the valley. They're in the valley with you. They see everything that you go through and they experience that. In a childlike manner, whether they're little kids, teenagers, or they're grown, they still experience it because you are their mother. They're happy when you're happy. They're sad when you're sad. In essence, they go through what you go through. Even when your children are grown, 
and have families of their own. They can and will still love and respect you and support you, be there for you. All of that depends on what type of mother you are, though. See, now there's a distinction between mothers and what's coming is godly mothers. So you have women, girls, ladies, whatever. They're all over here. Mothers are over here. Totally different section. And in this section of mothers, we have worldly mothers. We have godly mothers. Sometimes worldly mothers do things that turn their children off to them. Sometimes they put their children through so much trauma that the children lose respect for them. That happens with worldly mothers. Sometimes you have a mother that she understands what it is to be a mother, but can't comprehend how to fulfill what's required of her to be a mother. She doesn't understand that sometimes she has to make sacrifices for the children. So she'll place herself in front of them sometimes. Sometimes she may not understand how to love the child correctly or how to provide correctly or how to see you have those type of things. Some type of things that she may be teaching the children are worldly things that could come back to bite them in the end. We don't know. But sometimes mothers, they understand and they're trying their best to do what they can to fulfill the motherly duties, but sometimes they fall short. Sometimes they don't. And according to worldly standards, they're up there. They're great. We have that. But there's still a distinction between those mothers and godly mothers, which brings me to my next point for this morning, which may be my last point. Just as there's a difference between women and mothers, there's also a difference between mothers and godly mothers. And in Proverbs, it tells us that. Let's turn to Proverbs 31. We're going to read 25 through 29. Let me know when you're there. Girl. All right, all right. And what it says is strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in the time to come. Listen to that. Strength and honor are her clothing. That means she wears this every day. Strength. For you to have a godly mother, a regular mother, period, it has strength. They have strength. But a godly mother has a different kind of strength. First of all, strength comes from the Lord. A godly mother has strength to endure what her children may be going through, what they may be putting her through. She can en endure that. But also at the same time, endure that her children may be getting looked at a certain way because she's teaching them godly principles where the worldly mother isn't and may be liked a little more than the godly mother the children may not be as more objective to the worldly mother than to the godly mother because usually children like to do what they see others do like to do what they see people their age do. So by you instilling godliness in your children, it's some things they can't do that everybody else is doing. The godly mother understands that, and she understands that her kids are going to give her a lot of stuff for that. Why won't you let me do this? Why can't I do this? Why can't I watch like this? I'm going to watch what I want to watch. Why can't I listen to this type of music? Why can't I do this here? Why can't I go... She's going to be putting up with a lot of things. And God is going to give her the strength 
to withstand the temptation to give in. And it says she's going to wear it like clothing. That strength, she's going to wear like clothing. Honor, she's going to wear like clothing. It says it right here. Honor is glory. Honor is dignity. Honor is righteousness. This is what the godly mother wears. So people already know what they're getting when they're dealing with her. It isn't any of this wishy-washy, sometimey. She's strong in the Lord. Her children understand that. She can deal with that. She can deal with what comes with it because God is her strength. And she will rejoice. God is going to honor her for instilling these things into her children. God is going to reward her with some things that may be unimaginable to her. Maybe those kids grow up one day to become doctors and lawyers and nurses and things. And that mother may get in trouble and need help down the line. And who will be there for her? Because she instilled these principles in them. And they know they owe some of what they have and their success to her. She made those sacrifices for me. Not all children see that till they get older and their mothers or fathers. Or they just get older and realize my mom did a lot of stuff for me. Now it's my time to do some stuff for her. They could do some things that bring honor to the mother, to the family. And she's going to rejoice. So obviously, uh, with a godly mother, something is going to go on, and God is going to give her a chance to rejoice because it says she will rejoice when that time comes. That is one thing with the godly mother. 26 says she opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. <clears throat> Listen to that. When she speaks, she's not saying a whole lot of worldly stuff. She's not saying a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense. She's not teaching improper things. It said when she opens her mouth, wisdom comes out. Where does it say you get wisdom from? If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God for it. God gives out wisdom. So when you have a godly mother that has the godly love in her, he gives her a godly wisdom on how to rear these children. She's not speaking foolishness. She's speaking godliness. The children will take notice. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. Think about that. That's not I'm kind every now and then or when I want to be. This is something we live by. Kindness. She's not cussing people out. She's not acting a fool. She's not doing a whole lot of things that regular worldly mothers would do. Kindness is law. Hmm. Law, that's a real word. That's that's like hmm, that's that's almost like a commandment. Like this is law. This is what we do here. This isn't just something that you could do. And when you look at kindness right here, I'm going into the interlinear. It actually says kindness is is goodness and it's faithfulness. So what it is, is faithfulness is law to her. Goodness is law. That's what she does. Goodness. And she exhibits faithfulness. This is what she lives by. She instills that in her children. If godly mothers instill that in their children, they may grow up and go away from it for a little bit. But you can't take out what's in your heart. If this has been implanted in a child's heart from the time they were young, I may overlook it right now, but this becomes me. I'm going to come back to it. Bible tells us train up a child in the way that they should go. 
so that it won't depart from them. They're going to come back to it if you stay godly. Hmm. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. See, that is a difference between some of the worldly mothers and godly mothers. Some mothers have children, but then they do nothing after they have them. They look for someone else to take care of them and their children, or they just sit there and let their children do everything. You have those type of mothers. I'm not saying this is all of them, but you have those. Let's be honest. But what it's saying right here is that a godly mother doesn't do that. She makes sure her home is taken care of, and she doesn't fool around with just not doing anything. It says she does not eat the bread of idleness. So she's working, teaching, helping, doing good things, going outdoors. She's doing something rather than just sitting there. It's what a godly mother does. Hmm. And then once it says, once she gets to 28, her children arise up and call her blessed. And this part here, all of you, back then, pretty much had kids, you were married. So right here, it's a different society. But it says her husband will call her blessed as well. Some of you are mothers and you don't have a husband. We understand that. But you can still live up to the godliness of this. So just overlook this part for now, because you may have a husband coming your way pretty soon. I pray that. But it says her children will rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Think about that. How many sons, once they get older and are successful, and some of them may not be successful, but they come back to their mothers later on and say, my mom did this for me. My mom did that for me. My mom provided this for me. I wouldn't be here without my mother. And they let other people know that. And they give their mom the honor and the respect that is due to her. How many boys do that? How many girls do that when they get older and they come back? Your children are calling you blessed. Godly mothers, your children will call you blessed and give you praise and have other people knowing exactly what you mean to them. And I know I'm a father. To be a mother and have somebody come back and do that, I know that that is a great feeling. I know that's a great feeling. Especially when someone comes to tell you your children, they behave a certain way or they act a certain way or this here and it's bringing honor to you. And not only does that bring honor to you, but later on the child comes back and they call you blessed. That's God letting you know you've done a good job because it was already said right here that this would, is what would happen. So God is letting you know once your children do this, the Lord is smiling on you. So this last verse right here that we're going to go, we're going to stay here. The last verse, like I said, is we overlook a lot of things that mothers do. We put mothers through so much and we just group them in with regular women or, or girls or ladies or how, whatever terminology you use for them. We put them in, but a mother is so much more. Everyone doesn't have this calling. Everybody can't answer this call. Everybody doesn't exhibit that type of love that is needed to be a mother. A mother has to have all types of things. They have to have fierceness, but still at the same time be meek. They have to be aggressive for their children, but then at the same time still be submissive. It's a lot of things that goes into being a mother that only godly mothers and other mothers and the Godhead know about. But with all of that, 
Verse 31 right here says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. What this is saying is reward these mothers for what they do. Reward them. Praise them for what they do. Think about all the things that they do for your children. What they do for your household and the children's household. Some fathers right now wouldn't have things that they have without the mothers being there to do what they do. Think about that. Some men would have too much to worry about if the mother was not handling her responsibilities. I have to worry about me handling my responsibilities, plus go home and worry about my children or go over here or do that there. Or do. I'd have too much to do and I wouldn't be able to accomplish what I need to accomplish without the mother doing her job. So when you have a good godly mother that is doing her job, she makes the job of the house easier for you to be able to do your job. And what it's saying right here is that they should be honored. They should be rewarded and they should be well spoken of. As men, I don't see a lot of us honoring our mothers. I don't see a lot of us speaking well of our mothers. I don't see a lot of us speaking well of our children's mothers, whether we're with them or not. We're doing the exact opposite of what the Bible is saying we should do to good mothers. Instead of rewarding them, we're demeaning them. Instead of praising them, we're belittling them. We're putting them back through humiliation, back through embarrassment, back through scrutiny, back through a whole bunch of things that they shouldn't even be enduring in the first place. But you know who else had to endure the same things that mothers had to endure? Christ. When he came down, what did he endure? People lying on him. People giving him scrutiny. People talking about him. People belittling him. People dehumanizing him. People doing the same thing that we do to a bunch of mothers today. Christ had to go through it. Only difference is they put him on the cross and crucified him for it. Mothers didn't go through that. But all the other things, the criteria that's happened, we put them through the same mental anguish that they put Christ through. We give them the same feelings. But why can mothers take it? Because they have that same godly love that Christ had. Think about that. Mothers go through that for their children, right? God sent Christ to go through that for his children. We're God's children, right? Most of us are. i put it that way. We're God's children. He sent Christ down to die for a people that talk about him, that belittle him, that demean him, that do all types of things to him. But we're supposed to be his children. Mothers go through things, and sometimes with their children, they get demeaned, belittled, dehumanized, scrutinized, and unfairly treated, just as Christ was for his children. That's why women can endure what they endure. Not women, I'm sorry. Mothers can endure what they need to endure for their children because Christ did it for us. Mothers do have a godly love. We should honor that. We should embellish it. We should give them praises where praise is due, just like the scripture says. That's Proverbs 31 and 31. Give them honor where honor is due. Praise them now. We only get one mother. That's something my dad used to tell me. You only get one mother. You don't get a whole bunch of them, just one. And one day they won't be here anymore for you to give them the praise that they have. 
one day they may not be here anymore for you to honor them like you should have. Don't take them for granted. Give them their roses while they're still here. Same thing with the earth. Matter of fact, we only get one. Once we tear it up and it's gone, it's gone. With your mother, once you tear that relationship up and it's gone, it's gone. And it takes a lot for it to be gone. Just think about it. It takes a lot for God to be done with you. Same thing with the mother. So if no one else today tells you how appreciated you are, how loved you are, and how great you are as a mother, just know that you heard it from Pastor Mitchell, a true believer today. Mothers, we love you. We honor your sacrifices that you've made. We pray that the godliness that is in you continue to spread throughout you, your children, and this earth. We would not be here without a bunch of you. And no matter how we say you're doing, just know. We can feel some type of way about you as a mother, but what's important is how God feels about you as a mother. Does he look at you like this in Proverbs 31? Or does he look at you like you're just a random woman or a worldly mother? That's the most important thing. So to close us out, today is Mother's Day. Mothers, we honor you. If you're a regular worldly mother, get in this word. Become a godly mother. If you're a godly mother and you're doing this, all honor to you. We love you. We thank you. And we pray for you. That is the word for today. I wasn't going to be before you long. I know you like to Mother's Day. Get out. Do something with your mom. Call her, tell her you love her, you miss her something. Give her her flowers today. And with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close us out. Mrs. Morgan, do you have us? Amen. Yes, I have you. Father God, we come boldly before your throne of grace and mercy. Lord God, just so grateful and thankful that you blessed us to see another Lord today. Father, we thank you for this powerful word that Pastor T brought to us, Lord. Uh, Father, I pray that many of us will take away something that we've never heard before um, and even familiar scriptures, Father God, that we all know and have heard a zillion times, Lord God, were presented to us in a, in a new way, in a different manner. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather once again. Lord, and we just bless your holy name. We thank you for Mother Earth, Lord God. And even though there's so much destruction happening in your land, Father, today is yet another reminder of not only our earthly mothers, but the land that we dwell in. Help us to have a heart, Father God, to pray about Mother Earth, Father, that we are not continuously adding to the destruction of Mother Earth, but we will be kind to Mother Earth. Lord, we thank you for our earthly mothers, grandmothers, aunts, bonus moms, um, the women who stepped in in the gap, Father, for for those that lost their mothers, Lord, we pray for strength for them today, um, that you would remind them, Lord God, of happy times and happy memories. And for those of us, Lord God, who still have our earthly mothers here, help us, Father God, to honor them as often as we can, to love on them, to appreciate them, Father, that they would understand um, how much we truly, truly appreciate them. Well, we thank you for a true believer in this incredible ministry, Father. We thank you that you continuously uh, bring, that you continuously, Father God, bring wisdom and insight to our fearless leader, Pastor T. Father, we ask that you will pour back into him everything that he sacrificed, Father, in this time of study to bring forth his first Mother's Day message, Father, the first of many to come. And we just thank you for everybody that's on this line that took out the time today uh, to hear your word, Lord God. And we thank you for uh, the hundreds and hopefully the thousands that will, will hear this message, Father God, by various ways and various channels. And all these things, Father God, we ask in your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And 
for everyone at home, I say this is the word for the day. Thank you for that wonderful prayer, Mrs. Morgan. Um, that's pretty much it. Just remember, we will have our bid this Wednesday. It's going to be a good one. We're going to go into some things that happened from the last bid. It's about to start talking about marriage going on. So you might want to check in with that because we've uh, discovered a few things. But other than that, enjoy you guys' day. Mothers, we love you. We thank you. Hopefully you guys got something out of this message. And um, we'll see you next time. Hopefully we all want to see us all win. Talk to you later. I'm going to run this video and we out, y'all. All right? Amen. Oh, there it is. Let's get it.